Haynes Vandenberg Farm was continually owned by the Vandenberg family since 1699 until its sale in 2015. The farm was the last large holding from what was called the Vandenberg Patent. The Haynes Vandenberg Farm was continually owned by the Vandenberg family since 1699 until its sale in 2015. The farm was the last large holding from what was called the Vandenberg Patent. In 1691, Matthias Condratus hoteling purchased land from three Mohawk Indians called by their Christian names as Skimmerhorn, John DeBacher, and Colby for a piece of woodland lying behind Kasaki, to each of whom he paid a cloth duffel. In 1697, the same land was officially granted to him by Governor Benjamin Fletcher, the representative of the Crown. The land conveyed by this grant comprised 3,500 acres of heavily wooded land in the hills west of Kasaki and took in part uh, present day New Baltimore. And was known as the hoteling patent. Upon the death of Matthias Hoteling in 1706, the property was sectioned off. The southern and western parts were locally called the Vandenberg Patent. It was settled by Riker Jans Vandenberg, a son-in-law of Matthias Hoteling. Matthias's daughter, Katrina, had married Riker. The northeastern section remained the hoteling patent. The Vandenberg Kynes farm was the last and largest remaining parcel of the original grant occupied by Riker Chance and his descendants. The original settlement by Richard Chance and the first three generations occurred two to three miles east of the farm. During the 1950s, on Sunday, usually at least twice a month, our family visited the Haynes Vandenberg Farm. Here, my grandmother 
Mary Boyd Vandenberg presided over the extended family. That included her daughter, Catherine, and another daughter, Vera, and Catherine's family, her husband, Jim Haynes, and their children, Dale and Judy, my cousins. This was always a big treat since the household seemed to have a constant flow of people stopping in to discuss various doings in the neighborhood. Always plentiful sugary de desserts and for me an opportunity to explore antique books in the parlor. My grandmother stoked my interest in genealogy, which became a lifelong pursuit. I had opportunities to hay, to pick fruit, explore barns. The farm itself had large orchards of different fruit. Apples, cherries, peaches and plums. As my cousin Dale told me, every time a new Vandenberg baby was born, a new orchard was planted. Many of the fruit from these were converted to my mom's excellent jams. So you had a, you said it was a, a Model T touring car? Well, that, that was our family car, yeah, but uh, the other, the other was a truck. I mean, had a bed in the back, you know, a flatbed in the back. Uh, uh huh. The deli delivery truck, that's what it looked like. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had a little roof on it. Yeah, yeah stuff like that. that. That's what we took our wash down to Mrs. Moore with. <laughs> Do you remember whether we had anything before that or? Uh... I think touring car is the first, I mean. Uh-huh. As far as I know, that would be maybe in 17 or something like that. 1917, something like that. So before that, it was the uh, the horses and the, well, a buckboard or yeah, that wagon? Yeah, it would be horses. I mean, my father was good with the horses anyway. You know. Uh-huh. And we had as many as three teams in there one time, I guess. I remember two teams, but uh, I mean, uh, I think we did all the work of pollen and uh, growing in the hay and, you know, good stuff was all the old. There's a horse, uh, yeah. horse drawn wagon. Was there like a, did you have like a special, uh, oh, I don't know, like a buckboard or? Some oh, kind of carriage or something like that, or going well, places. We had a had a two seater carriage, you know, with the horses. Uh -huh. I, I don't know whether it had single series or not. I think it was two horse drawn, I believe. Uh huh. And uh, that's where our kids got into that, and uh, we used to. You know, Bring it out on top of the hill and run down the hill. <laughs> you steer it, you know, you could steer it a little bit with a rope or something like that. Uh-huh. We took the shave off, you know. <laughs> we did that to a rat wreck it then, I guess. <laughs> and they had a little color, a slate color. I mean, I remember that too. And that, I guess a single horse on that, you know. Come what was that now? Uh, what'd you call well, it? Well, just two-seater cutter with runners on, you know, uh -huh. slave runners on. Oh, oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, I, uh, I guess he went courting or something like that, you know. <laughs> uh, we did have a big bobsleigh, too. I mean, they were horse drawn. Uh-huh. That, that was a work. You know, work job. I mean, you know, it's the work of that. <laughs> wow. Now, yeah. uh, so you got a, the Studebaker. You think you got that in 
25 or something like that? I don't think it's my mind 25. Yeah. So uh, I think we went to Claude the Freight and sold, sold Studebakers and got, got it and uh, had that quite a while. He used to, his father used to drive us down to school, down to high, high school. I guess it was just me, I think. Maybe, maybe my sister, probably my sister too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I remember going down to Martin's Hill and, and was, the car started spinning around. I thought I'd just grip the wheel and, and wait till it stopped spinning. <laughs> All ice, you know. And I just I had those hard tires, well, they weren't hard tires, they were, they were 60 pounds in them. Uh -huh. The small tires were 60 pounds, like they a, were hard as rocks, you know. Just like a bicycle tire or something like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not so well, it's a little bigger than that, of course, but, mm -hmm. but they put 60 pounds of air pressure in the ball on the <laughs> And of course, we had flat tires all the time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good old days. <laughs> well, take a look at those those pictures and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Try, try well, more than think. one. Well, it's just the one picture, and then the the thing <laughs> I got from the internet describing yeah. the other, you know, that model, particular model. Yeah. But uh, maybe well, you can find something on the internet that's more I like don't it know, or something. Uh, no, in the garage. <laughs> I thought I'd put up the license place for each year. Uh-huh. And the first one was 1913. Wow. So, and I had the, all the numbers right up there, the oh, 20s or 30s or something, whatever. And then somebody swore, swiped it up on things. But he had them in the order, or, you know, every year. Wow. And they had them all lined up around the garage. Huh. Yeah. But the first one was 1930, and that was a mammal job. I mean, that's a kind of expensive thing. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, a mammal face, face or something, you know. Yeah. I remember it being red and something like that. But they didn't make them like that anymore. The 14 was starting to get down to the thin again. Huh. On a hill north of the main farmhouse is a small cemetery. It is the final resting place of two generations of Vandenbergs. The cemetery now is overgrown. Many of the tombstones are broken and on the ground. However, for the past two centuries, the cemetery care was undertaken by the resident Vandenbergs, and over the past decades by Jim and Dale Haynes, who kept the plot in good order. However, with the sale of the farm, no such stewardship to maintain the cemetery exists, so its likely ultimate fate will be a continuation of its disintegration and decline. Here is a listing of the folks we believe are buried in this cemetery. Henry Vandenberg, by family legend depicted in this photograph, was known by the name of Bush Hank. This was an apparent lead since the uh, farm required bush and timber clearing to become active in the early 1800s.
Henry Vandenberg and his wife, Rebecca Van Loon, were children of Revolutionary War soldiers. Both Reichert Vandenberg and Albert Van Loon were members of the 11th Regiment of uh, the Albany Militia, which fought at Saratoga. They both, along with other numerous members of the family, signed the 1775 Kaksaki De Declaration of Independence, which anticipated the July 4th Declaration of Independence. Henry and Rebecca's daughter, Christine, died young. She seems to be the oldest burial in the cemetery, having died in 1813. As was sometimes the custom, they decided to name a subsequent daughter, Christina. She survived many years and became the wife of William Winans dying in 1886. Rachel Vandenberg, a daughter of Henry and Rebecca, died in 1866. The photograph you see here was unnamed. However, since it was found in the Vandenberg photographs and her dresses of the 1860s, and she has a resemblance to Richard Henry Vandenberg, I think it's likely that this is her. This grave contains Lydia Hunter Crane. Her husband was Albert Vandenberg, a son of Henry R. Vandenberg. Albert died in 1837. His wife, Lydia Hunter Crane, remarried to William Edwards, a resident of Leeds, New York. It would seem she had no living children from either marriage. Edwards had two daughters. Edwards subsequently died in 1857. Apparently, Lydia Hunter Crane returned to Kasaki. Here she resided until her death in 1886. In an 1880 census, it stated she was living alone and her occupation was listed as household help. She is buried in the Vandenberg Cemetery, where Albert is also buried. Richard H. Vandenberg, Henry's son, died at a relatively young age of 40. He was apparently quite successful in his farming activities. He left behind his wife, Rachel Lampman Vandenberg, and 
four sons and three daughters. His wife, Rachel, was a strong, dynamic woman. She apparently took over the running of the uh, farm after his death. And indeed, a 1880 census, she is described as a farm manager. Her sons were successful in their own right. Henry became a physician in Boston Spa. Albert became a postmaster in nearby Medway. And Albert's son, Richard Henry, was a physician. John became an educator. Her son, Edwin, and grandson, Paul, took over the management of the home. In this photograph, she is in the upper right corner uh, with her son, John, and daughter-in-law, Winifred Miller Vandenberg. Her grandchildren, uh, Rachel and Edith, are in the front. Edith was subsequently married to James Betts. Richard and Rachel's daughters, Edith and later Rebecca, are both buried in this cemetery. specified on the tombstone include Philip, 